to that mega con about you said it. Uh, starting a business, who are some of the main uh, individuals that gave you some really constructive criticism on your work? I'm going to tell a story, um, and, it, and it involves Brian down here. Um, it does. You probably don't remember it, but I remember it well because I didn't like it for a long time after that. No, it happened in MegCon several years ago before this book even came out. We brought um, uh, our book and showed it to Brian, you know, for you know maybe a possibility of working together or something, you know, anything. We were just really struggling trying to get it going, and Brian looked at it and he's like looking through the pages like this is great stuff. It's fantastic. The artwork's good. The writing's good. And he goes, what makes you think that I would want to publish this? And I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm being honest. I was like, this guy just, just pissed me off. And I was like, I'm sorry. It's okay. And, but it, it really hit me like. Don't beat me up. I was like, he's right though. Why would he want to? Everything he does is, is, that was like, is horror. That was and what I have is science fiction. Like, that doesn't go together. That was just kind of stupid on my part, you know live and learn. But Brian was actually a big influence on me deciding to completely just go indie with it and do my own thing and not try to get you know this company to publish it or that company to publish it. So Mr. Brian over here was a big influence on me in the beginning. Oh thank you. But I guess was the point of that story kind of like look at your publisher targets yeah. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. That's what it was. Know, know your genres, know your market. Definitely. But now you're, you're talking, talking about for like an artistic critique, or are you looking for for base? Your writing, your, okay. Uh, your artwork, like who is who's somebody there that really kind of said this is good stuff, but you need to do certain things like that. Your mentors will just start showing up when you show up. They show up. So you know, let's say you're an artist and you're starting out, and you may not have the facility to see the strengths or weaknesses in your work. You come to a show like this. You show these guys. You show people you happen to meet. Um, kind of when you're in the game, it, like a nice process starts taking over. So I think each one of us individually could speak to different people who inevitably are influences. And if you're kind of open, people will continue to influence you. You know, I, there's, you know, you're never too old to learn. There's a lot to learn. Does that make uh, make sense? Mm -hmm. You gotta take that criticism the right way too. I mean, Brian gave his opinion, you know, to him as far as that book goes. But there's other people that are in that genre and will, you know, have a different view on it totally altogether. One of the things I did, as soon as the books are done, I get certain main sent out to reviewers. You know, no charges, send them out, get the reviews, good or bad, you have reviews to post it, to see what, what they think of it and change tactics if you need to do it at that point. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah. How do you find for reviewers? How do you find reviewers? It's just hundreds They're all over. Google. Yeah. Comic book, Comic book yeah. reviewers. Walking, walking around downstairs right, right now. Yeah. 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 Well, also, uh, but what would they even want to spend time reading? Your well, stuff? time out. So this, the focus of this panel is marketing, right? In a, in, yeah. a, in a nutshell, yeah. In a nutshell. So if I was in your position starting out, I treat every con sort of like a, a strategic attack. You have your comic ready for review. You look inside your program and look at your exhibitors and figure out who are the reviewers. You know, not being full of it, you just go over and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Johnny Jones. I have this comic called, you know, um, Super Twinkies, and right, and just whatever. You know, say, would you like to review it? And they they will or they won't. That's all different, right? Kids, right? And just you know, it's very practical. I mean, that's reviewers are in the business of reviewing material. They will either review it or not review it. And then same thing with like prospective publishers and stuff. So you do, you know, again, you do Western. You take a look at historically in Diamond Previews who publishes westerns. You know if you don't want to do it yourself, and and then you approach those people, that kind of stuff. It's actually it's right there in front of you. It's very practical. Yeah, and the thing too, like say if you self-publish your book and you have it at your table at the con, and somebody walks up and it says press on their badge, give them the book. Yeah. Don't say that would be five dollars, please. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just 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 be willing to let stock go. You know, give it away. Oh, can I tell you a give it away story? So I'm starting out, and uh, my first comic book was a comic book called Evil Ernie. And my local comic book shop was Golden Apple in Los Angeles. And it's just so cool that Golden Apple would be my local, uh, local comic shop, because they just had the luminaries of comics always hanging out in the back. Bill Leibowitz, who passed away, had this cool back office and stuff, and you know I would go in, and he was always generous and really kind, and say, sit down. Uh, 
hey, I want you to meet this guy. This is uh, Neil Gaiman. This is a young startup. A very generous man. Well, he uh, created the opportunity for us to do a signing of Evil Learning Number no. 1 in December of 91. And uh, I think I don't remember exactly how this came up, but he said, he goes, so uh, what do we want to do for the signing? I was like, well, I'm really looking forward to selling the issues of number one. He's like, we're selling them. I'm like, well, of course, yeah, we're going to sell these. He's like, he's like ah, no, you should, you should give away uh, copies. And he's like, how many do you have? I said, like, 250. He's like, I should give away all 250. I'm like, what are you talking about? Give away 250 comics that I just did, blah, 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 blah. But I kind of took on the, st the student role and said, OK, he probably knows something I don't. And that, that's probably been the number one lesson I think I might have learned in comics is uh, when you can, give it away. We gave away 250 comics of Evil Learning in the Southern California area, and then over the course of uh, maybe the next year, we gave away 2,500. And it actually, since it was a decent enough comic, it did create a groundswell, and it created repeated readers. And um, the give it away thing works tremendously. You know, it, not only in comics, but in all forms of life. Like, the more you could give stuff away, I don't exactly know why, but the more stuff comes back. So if you can actually, from a marketing perspective, if you can swing giving away a bunch of copies to influential people or demographics you want, I can't recommend that enough. In fact, I mean, like, Lady Death's coming out again as a monthly series, so we're Woo! crazy enough, thank you, in November, and we're crazy enough to, starting at San Diego onward, we're giving away 60,000 copies of the first issue across the country. But that's the only way to charge up people and get people like yeah. excited again to create reader bases. It's giving away is the thing. Strange but true. Sorry. Yeah, don't be discouraged too. Say if you give away ten copies, if one of them if you get hear back from one of them, you got a success. Yeah, that's pretty good.